Let's talk about how to calculate the shortest distance between two lines. It's important to note that the lines must be parallel to each other, because if they're not parallel, then they would have to intersect, so you could find that shortest distance to be zero at the point of intersection. So we will only be calculating the shortest distance between two parallel lines, and to do so we'll need to know the perpendicular slope between those two lines. As discussed in our previous video, which was calculating the shortest distance between a point and a line, the same idea holds that the shortest distance between two lines is a perpendicular distance. PR would be the shortest distance because it is the leg of a right triangle rather than the hypotenuse of a right triangle. For example, PQ is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. PQ would have to be longer than PR. Likewise, PS would be longer than PR for the same reason. So the first step each time that you're asked to solve a problem like this is to find the slope of the lines that you were given, and then identify the slope of a line that would be perpendicular to both of those lines. Using that perpendicular slope, count from any point that you pick from one of the lines until you cross the other line. Then you'll take that point of intersection that you found in step two, as well as the original point that you counted from, plug those two numbers into the distance formula, and simplify. Let me show you what I mean. Here are two lines, and they're parallel. I can tell they're parallel because they both have a slope of 2. For both lines, you go up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1. So these two lines are parallel, they both have a slope of 2. A line that would be perpendicular to these two lines would have a slope of negative 1 half. So I'm just going to pick any point I want to on either of these two lines and count according to a negative one-half slope until I intersect the other line. I'm just going to pick the top point here on this blue line, but I could pick any point I wanted to. And from this point, I'll count down one and right two, down one and right two, until I intersect the green line. So I will have drawn this line. But like I said, you could have picked any point that you wanted to and counted down one and right two. So I could have picked this line, or this line, or even this line. So let's say that I wanted to go with these two points. You could go with any pair that you wanted to, but I'm going to go with these ones. I'm going to call this point A and this point B. Those are the point of intersection between the perpendicular line and the two parallel lines. A is the point 0, 3, and B is the point 4, 1. So to calculate the shortest distance between line Q and line R, I'm just going to calculate the distance between A and B. To do so, I'll plug the numbers into the distance formula, and when I simplify, I get approximately 4.5 units. Alright, pretty easy. Let's try another one. This time our lines are parallel. Both of them have a slope of negative 1, which means the perpendicular slope would be positive 1. So again, pick any point you want to on either line that you want to and count according to a 1 over 1 slope. So you could pick this line, or this line, or this line, or a whole bunch of other lines. Any line would do. I'm going to choose this line. Point A is the point negative 4, negative 5. And point B is the point 2, 1. And now I'll take those two points and plug their coordinates into the distance formula. But to be clear, any of these three lines, or any other lines that you could pick that have a slope of 1 and connect these two lines would work. So you could have used negative 9, 0, and negative 3, positive 6, and it's going to give you the same answer. But I'm going to use A and B, so I'm going to plug negative 4, negative 5, and 2, 1 into the distance formula, crunch the numbers, and I get approximately 8.5 units. The two examples we've looked at so far have been pretty straightforward because you could count from one line to the other, and get nice, easy to identify points of intersection. It won't always be that way. Let me show you another example. These two lines are parallel because they both have a slope of 10 thirds. To get from this point to this point, I count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and to the right 3. 1, 2, 3. And same thing for the green line, I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and right 3. So these two lines are parallel, both with a slope of 10 thirds, which means a perpendicular slope would be negative 3 tenths. So I could pick any point that I wanted to and count down 1, 2, 3, and then to the right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is the line that would be perpendicular to the blue line and passes through the green line, but it's really unclear exactly where does it pass. And it would be true no matter what point you picked to count from, none of them cross at a nice, easy-to-identify point. 
So let's say I decided to focus on this part. I know point A, because it was already labeled on the blue line, that's the point negative 3, negative 2. But what are the coordinates of B? In order to figure that out, we're going to have to do some extra work. We're going to write an equation to represent V, line V, and we're going to write an equation to represent line AB. Then we'll set those two equations equal to each other and solve for x, and then plug in to solve for y. I know that sounds like a lot of work, so let me show you what I mean. The first thing we need to do is actually pretty straightforward, and that's just write an equation for line v. We're going to write it in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. m, like we said, was 10 thirds, we had already counted that. And b, little b, the lowercase b in y equals mx plus b, is for the intercept, the y-intercept of the line, which is down here at negative 7. So the equation for line v is y equals 10 thirds x minus 7. Okay, cool. Now I need to know the equation for line AB so that I can set it equal to this one. Well, all that I really know about line AB is that it passes through the point A, which is negative 3, negative 2, and it has a slope of negative 3 tenths. Well, that's plenty of information to figure out an equation in slope-intercept form, but we'll have to start with point-slope form. Remember, point-slope form is the form that you use when you have a point and a slope. So we'll plug in our point and we'll plug in our slope, and it looks like this. I'm going to simplify that to make those pluses instead of minus minuses. Then I'll distribute, and then I'll subtract, and I get a rather ugly equation, but that is the equation of line AB. So now the question is, where do those two lines intersect? Where does line AB intersect line V? Since they both equal Y, I can just set the rest of it equal to each other, so I have 10 thirds X minus 7, equals negative 3 tenths x minus 29 tenths. And that's kind of a hot mess that I'd rather not deal with. I don't particularly like dealing with fractions, so I'm going to get rid of them by multiplying everything by the least common multiple of the denominators. The least common multiple of 3 and 10 would be 30, so I'll multiply everything by 30. 10 thirds times 30 is 100. Negative 7 times 30 is negative 210. Negative 3 tenths times 30 is negative 9 and negative 29 tenths times 30 is negative 87. So they're big numbers, but at least they're not fractions, and that feels easier to deal with if you ask me. So now I'll just solve the equation, add 9, add 210, divide by 109, and we do get a pretty ugly answer, but of course that was to be expected. That's the whole reason we're doing all of this extra work, is because we couldn't identify exactly where b was. But 1.1 does seem pretty reasonable for the x value of b. But what's the y value of b? To figure that out, we're going to take the 1.1 that we just found and plug it back into either of the original equations. I'm going to plug it into the first one because it has only one fraction instead of two, and that feels slightly easier to me. And when I simplify, I get a y value of approximately negative 3.2. So that means that b is the point 1.1, negative 3.2. a, remember, was the point negative 3, negative 2. So now I can plug these coordinates into the distance formula and calculate the shortest distance between those two lines. Turns out to be approximately 4.3 units. I want you to pause the video for this last example and see if you can try it on your own. I've taught you everything you need to know in order to accomplish this task, so go ahead and pause the video and try it now. Let's see how you did. The slope of both of these lines is negative 5 fourths, that makes them parallel and a perpendicular slope would be positive 4 fifths. So you might have drawn a different line than I did. I drew this one, which would be from going up 1, 2, 3, 4, and then to the right 5. So this is the entire line, but I stopped it at line x because that's as far as I need to go. You might have drawn a different line that has a slope of 4 fifths, and that's okay. So your work might not look exactly like mine, but that's okay, as long as you get to the same final answer. So I've got point A is the point 0, negative 2. And point B is... I don't know. We're going to have to figure it out. In order to figure it out, we'll write an equation to represent line x. Remember the slope was negative 5 fourths, and we can tell that the y-intercept is up here at 4. So the equation of line x would be y equals negative 5 fourths x plus 4. Now I need to write an equation for line AB. All I know is that it passes through the point 0, negative 2 and it has a slope of 4 fifths. Now if you're a particularly observant student, you might have noticed that we don't actually need point-slope form for this one. We can skip straight to slope-intercept form because we were given 
or we could identify easily the y-intercept. This has to be b. If you didn't notice that, no worries. You can still plug in these numbers in two-point slope form and simplify to get an answer in slope-intercept form. But like I mentioned, the slope was 4 fifths, the y-intercept was negative 2, so we get y equals mx plus b, y equals 4 fifths x minus 2 for the m and the b. It all makes sense if you wanted to skip all of that because I chose to use a y-intercept for the known point. Either way, now we have two equations, and I want to know where do those two equations cross? Where do the lines intersect each other? So I'll take the two equations and set them equal to each other. Again, I don't love dealing with fractions, so I'm going to deal with the least common multiple, which is 20. Multiply everything in the equation by that least common multiple, and I get bigger numbers, but they're not fractions. I'll subtract 16, I'll subtract 80, and I'll divide by negative 41, and we find approximately 2.9 for our x value, which seems pretty reasonable. b is almost all the way to 3, but not quite. And now let's find out the y value. To find out the y value, I'll just take my 2.9 and plug it into either of the equations for x. I'm going to plug it into the second one because it doesn't have a negative on its coefficient, and I don't know, that feels slightly easier to me. You can plug it into either one, though, and still get the same answer of approximately 0.3, which again seems pretty reasonable because b isn't very high off of the x-axis. So this point, 2.9 and 0.3, seems like a pretty reasonable pair of coordinates for b, and I'll plug those numbers, as well as a, which was 0, negative 2, into the distance formula to find the distance from line w to line x. Turns out that it's approximately 3.7 units. And that's all you need to know about calculating the shortest distance between two parallel lines. And that actually wraps up our unit on parallel and perpendicular lines, and our next unit will be focusing on transformations.